Coming up on Celtics Today, Game 5 at the Garden. What kind of atmosphere can we expect on Causeway? Plus, Jason Tatum shares the unique perspective Joe Mazzulla gave his team heading into Game 5. And what could Kristaps Porzingis provide if he returns tonight? Celtics Today starts right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Celtics Today. Drew Carter and Mark D'Amico with you. It's good to be home. Yeah, it's back in Boston. This is where we're supposed to be. Yeah. This is where it's supposed to happen. Back home for Game 5. Let's get it done today. Would it have been nice to wrap it up in a sweep in Game 4 in Dallas Friday? Sure, that would have been nice. Did the Celtics want to do that? Absolutely. But are we complaining about having a Game 5, another show to do? No, we're not complaining That's not to say that this was done on purpose. No. no one would say no. that, That's, but of course. it's a pretty good second opportunity to, to take down the Mavs for an 18th NBA championship. An 18th NBA championship, and today is 617 day. Happy 617 day to everybody out there. Also the 16th anniversary of that 2008 NBA championship, so maybe the mojo is right. Maybe the vibes are falling into place the, here. The stars are aligning. I, That's what it feels like. It does sort of feel like that. And you know we got game five at the Garden, which means that place is going to be juiced up. Yes. I mean, if it's anything like it was for games one and game two, it's going to be insane in there. It's going to be loud. Anything like the watch party for games three and four, <laughs> the game wasn't even happening in Boston. Sold out. And it was still sold out, and people were were juiced up. They were obviously very into the action. <laughs> Um, and this is a, a town, Mark, where you got the, the Red Sox, I think, had two sellouts in a row against yep. the Yankees. Tom Brady goes into the Patriots Hall of Fame. That place looks like they're having a concert there at Gillette Stadium. <laughs> Not a seat in the, in the barn. And then, of course, the Celtics at the Garden. Even when the games aren't here, that place is full. Yeah, I, I have a certain level of expectations going into this game for the crowd, right? Because I've been here for 16 seasons now, and I've been a part of some crazy, crazy environments inside that building. I have never been inside the building when the team has had an opportunity to win a championship. So like what we're all about to experience tonight inside this arena, I personally have not experienced and I've been working here for almost two decades. So like I expect this to just be at a total other level of like hunger, excitement, like just people going berserk from start to finish. So I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be just a wild night for everyone to be a part of. I think it's not just going to be inside the arena, but probably outside yeah, of yeah. it as well, really across the city, across all of New England. We cannot wait to watch this game with you. Here's the thing. The Celtics have a great home court advantage, and they've somehow been better on the road <laughs> in these playoffs, of course, with the exception of, of Game 4 in Dallas, where, you know, lose by 38 points. Don't talk about it. Yeah, you know, it, it, felt, it felt like... The Mavericks were desperate, and they came out and they played like it. But don't let that distract you from what happened in the first three games where the Celtics, for the majority of those minutes, were the better team on the floor. And that's not even a question. Like, there's no question about that. If the Celtics just get back to what they did during the first three games, which we're seeing here in these, these short clips, if they just get back to doing what they did then of playing with, like, absolute max effort, sharing the ball, playing with pace, uh, making open shots, right? Like, if they just get back to those – things that they have done all season long, they're going to be just fine tonight. And obviously that's not saying or guaranteeing that they're going to win. And it's not, there's no guarantee that they're going to play the way that they did during, during those first three games. But if they do, they're going to be in position to win the game. And I think that's all you can ask for in a clinch opportunity of the NBA Finals. And a huge X factor will be the availability of Kristaps yeah. Porzingis, who didn't dress for Game 3 in Dallas, did dress for Game 4 didn't play at all, more in the paint is coming later on Porzingis on what impact he possibly could have, and hopefully we'll have an update on his injury status later on during the day. But look, outside of game four, I mean, the Celtics, they, they built that 3-0 lead for a reason. Mm -hmm. They deserved it, and I think we're all hoping that the Celtics prove to be the team that they were for the first 99 games of the regular season in the playoffs where really they were dominant. I mean, one of the most dominant teams in NBA history. Yeah, and one of the reasons why they have been so dominant is because they don't let things snowball. Like I, I've been on this hill screaming for the whole season that this team is different because they do not let things snowball within a game usually. They did in game four, mm -hmm. but they definitely don't let a snowball into multiple games. So they played a bad game, a poor game in game four. I, based upon 100 games of evidence now, I would be shocked if that happens again tonight. And just keep in mind, folks, for some more historical context, we're talking about anniversaries and the stars aligning. 40 years ago in the NBA Finals, 1984, the Lakers waxed the Celtics in Game 3. 
and Boston ended up winning that series. Yeah. So you can you can have a stinker and still come out and win the series. And they won the first three games, so they gave themselves an opportunity. Not that they want to, but yeah. they gave themselves enough cushion where they could have a stinker. And then come back home and maybe do it tonight. And, and here's the thing is a game five gives us a chance to have some more social time. So let's do that. Moving over to the big board for a little social time. And of course, when it's social time, time to bring in Celtics in arena host, Melissa Valdez. Hello, Energy. gentlemen. Yes. Energy What's has up? arrived. It. Welcome back up, home. Melissa? We missed you guys you. last yes. week. Thank you. But it's looking to be a great night. How were the watch parties, by the Incredible. way? Incredible. The energy was so good. It almost felt like the players were here. Like it was the actual Well, they, they were, here. right? With the, With the Jumbotron. <laughs> yeah. But the energy was incredible. All of the fans came out and the, it was just so good. And I know tonight, it's going to be times 100. Taking it to another We've been level. searching through social media to see what the fans are talking about. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of funny uh -huh. stories and posts. So let's check out the first one and yes, see what they're saying. It. What do we got? What do we got? It's oh a holiday. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, obviously, we had a rough game in the last one. But it's either, you know, a little comparison here. Celtics lost by 30 or Celtics win mm -hmm. the finals in Boston, which hopefully is tonight. That's right. And shout out to Celtics United That's 18. Right. I, I think Celtics United 18 makes the show every time yeah, because every this time, is just right? money social media I mean, content. So good. When we get a really good meme, like the sad bus, happy bus, like this is perfect, right? Like, yeah, we were all sad they lost by 30, but... It's not over. It's not they over. They got a chance to win the finals in Boston. At so home it's tonight. nice and bright over here. Let's concentrate I like on that. this set. I like that. Nice energy. Let's take a look at the... And speaking of winning at home tonight, Here's the holiday. it is 617. Shout outs to at Inangelo for this incredible post right here. Celtics won their last title on June 17th, 2008. Monday, today, is June 17th, 2024. Boston Crazy. area code is 617, and it's all part of the plan. Check out our squad right here. Superheroes coming through. I wish they would have added Al Horford to this, for though. Real. But you know what? It's always good. getting left off. There's, it's all, there's good. only so much room. Yeah. There's only so much headroom. <laughs> it's By the way, got to give a shout out to Double Dribble, right? Like, the, yeah. a lot of people have been stealing his artwork and not yes. giving him credit. Double Dribble down here is the one who put this together. This is amazing. And it really is all part of the plan. And, and like, yeah. tonight is the night. So a shout out to Double Dribble for sure. And Melissa, we talked about your Avengers, maybe That's blind right. spot <laughs> when it comes to superhero movies. They look like the Green Lantern here. Okay. Uh, another, okay. another thing to add to you your list of movies. You know what, I'm taking notes. I'm feeling all the superpowers coming through, but it feels like sure. today is our night, fellas. That's what, that's what the rings are going to look like, oh, too. Cannot wait. Uh, hopefully they got a little more bling. <laughs> cannot wait. <laughs> And this last one, of course. Oh, speaking of Al, we didn't of leave Al him out. Oh my rightfully goodness. so. Here he is. He has the last banners around him, 2008 banner. And tonight, hopefully we will get one. Al Horford deserves this trophy. He's been working so hard. And the fans love him, of course. Yes. Out, oh, and we've all got to love the Boston Brick. That's my guy. He puts Thank you, out the Boston great, Brick. Uh, he puts out great artwork all the time. Super unique stuff. This is awesome. We all know, like, Everyone said, we got to get this for Al. We should right? do. We, we got to get do. this for Al, and I can't wait for that man to be able to hold that trophy in his arms. I'm just in awe of this. This I, is incredible. This is beautiful up here on the big screen. Very Boston powerful Brit. post. Well done. It's our night well tonight, done. game five. Celtics fans, bring the energy. Let's be louder than we've ever been yes. before, and we cannot wait to get that trophy. Yes. I'll see you guys on the court. Absolutely. Technically, we're in the media, but something tells me I might be screaming today, too. <laughs> we all game, right? we Is that all professional or unprofessional? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. We got to roll with it. Look, it's going to be loud in there tonight. We know the Celtics fans are super talented, That's and they're right. going to be super loud for game five tonight. Melissa, thank you. We're back with In the Paint right after this. Game one of the NBA Finals is history, and it wasn't close. No! That's Throws it down with violence and thunder with the right hand. Clean strip of Luca. Flies in for the right hand slam. Pivot a little bit, turns the corner. He's got a lead to the basket. He flies in and slams wow. it with two hands. Now Horford sets the screen. Tatum rocking the three. Oh, got it! Oh. Richard shovel back to oh. Zing. He's having a trail three. Got it! Drew Holiday out of the front court. Votes a pass out to the corner. Hauser off balance three. And that's good! Jalen Brown flies with a two hand slam. Ball goes Tatum spins. Attacks two hand slam. Wow. Kyrie cannot guard Jason Tatum. Huh. Jalen Brown, he's got three. All right, we're staying at this big board. We're going to do in the paint, which is where we break down some X's and O's from the Boston Celtics. Try to give you maybe a player's or a coach's viewpoint of what they're seeing out there. Diving in a little bit deeper than just your points, your rebounds, and your assists. And what do we got today, Mark? Not quite X's and O's, but yeah. we're going to take a look. And this is not saying that Kristaps Porzingis is playing tonight, okay? This is simply saying that if he is available, okay. this is something 
that he can bring to the table, even if he's not at full speed. So if we dive into this first clip here that we're going to take a look at, the, the very first thing I want to point out is that one thing that Dallas was doing with him from the very start, his first touch of the game in game one, they were like all up in his airspace. I mean, yeah. crowding him and making sure that he did not have much comfortability with the ball in his hands. However, one thing with Chris Tass Porzingis that will not change no matter how injured he is, no matter how slow he might be, if he's hindered by this injury, if he plays, he's always going to be seven foot two. He's always going to be seven foot three, whatever right. the numbers that you want to say. It always changes. And he's <laughs> always going to be able to get his shot off. Yeah. So that's exactly what we want to look at here. So if we roll this clip, we could see the Dallas defender is all up in him. That's Derek Jones Jr. He's trying to get the steal. He's trying to get the steal. Porzingis is always going to be able to get the shot off. So even if he's not at full speed during this game, if he does play, even if he can't really move, because there was another play where he actually drove right past Derek Lively and took it to the basket for a dunk, even if he can't do those things, he's going to be able to put the, be able to put the ball on the floor for a couple of dribbles and take a shot if he needs to. So this is just an element that the Celtics did not have in the last couple games that if he is available, no matter how limited he might be, he's always going to be able to do something like this. He, he can take advantage of a mismatch no matter what. And, I mean, the defender there is Derek Jones Jr., who has one of the biggest vertical leaps in the NBA. <laughs> like, this is a vertical player. And here he's going to stay on his feet because he doesn't want to pick up a foul. But that's the thing against Porzingis is unless you're about his height, you got no chance of contesting this shot. Exactly. It's like Kevin Durant, right? Yeah. Like Kevin Durant, he's always been able to get a shot off in his career. That's not to say he's 7'2 or whatever, but because of how long he is, because of how high his release is, he can always get his shot off. So poor Zingas, no matter when he plays, if he does play, he's going to be able to do that. No matter how limited he is in his speed, if he is limited at all, that's one thing he's going to bring to the table for the Celtics. Yeah, KP played in games one and two. He played a total of 44 minutes, and he was a plus 25 in those minutes. That so ain't bad. It's pretty that efficient. That ain't bad at all. Pretty efficient. <laughs> and even then, it didn't seem like he was really 100% with that, that calf issue to come back yeah. from. So hopefully we get to see Chris Stapps, Porzingis tonight. Hopefully we have an update on that very soon. It'd be nice to bring it back for game five. Jason Tatum's going to tell us a little bit about their mentality going into that. That's next in Small Bites. It's time to toast the NBA Finals. To a legend to made. Because a new era of greatness is on display. The Dallas Mavericks dynamic combination of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic made them the best in the West. The powerful duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown made the mighty Celtics beasts of the East. Two teams giving it their all. Here's to the NBA Finals. Now we're back at the comfy set to uh, break down some sound from a player or coach with the Boston Celtics. And of course, we're going to go to number zero, Jason Tatum, who's got some thoughts, some insight he shares from what Joe Missoula told the team. Look, when Coach Missoula is motivating his guys, a lot of the time it's a little bit unorthodox. You never know what you're going to hear. And uh, haven't heard this one before. So <laughs> get ready. Here we go. This is Jason Tatum before game five. You know, Joe did a great job today of like reminding us that um, it's okay to smile during war. It's okay to have fun during high-pressure moments. Uh, that's what makes our team unique and, and special. We would love to win tomorrow more than anything. But if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. We have more opportunities. Smiling during warfare. <laughs> Who doesn't do that? Never would have thought that yeah. we were going to hear that yesterday in practice. But listen, I, I think the whole point that Joe Mazzula is just trying to say is that don't put too much pressure on yourself to close this out. Like, what has made us such a great team and, and a successful team throughout the season? We've had a lot of fun on the court together as a group, as a unit. So he's just saying, go out and do that. And then that last part, I think a lot of people kind of took that out of context over the last 24 hours, thinking that the Celtics, like, don't care if they don't win this game. That is not what they are saying. They are just saying, don't put the pressure on ourselves that we have to win this game. And if we don't, it's over. They're just saying, tonight's the next opportunity for us to close out this series. It doesn't have to be the only opportunity for us to close out this series. Yeah, to me, this reminds me of between the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals, there was a lot of noise <laughs> and a lot of useless discourse. 
of course the Celtics want to win this game. Right. And, and of course they're going to be motivated. And they're, it's the NBA Finals. Like, to suggest that they're going to punt this game or that they punted game four, totally ridiculous. And it's not just Jason Tatum who said this. It, Peyton Pritchard said something similar. Yeah. Xavier Tillman did as well. Clearly the message is getting through. And I think you're right, man. Go out there and play loose. You know, you don't have to... You don't have to act like the season ends if you lose this game tonight. You have given yourself the ability to play loose because you built a 3-0 lead. But at the same time, I would love to see them play loose, take a lead, and then just like go for the kill. Yeah. Like that, we, we all would love to see that tonight where we just see this team like pounce, attack, and just take the Mavs down and close this out. Let's hope it happens. Let's hope that happens. I mean, look, like we said, 6-1-7 day, game five at home, going to be a raucous crowd. They'll have opportunities to do so, I think, even though this isn't a do-or-die game five. It's, it's not a must-win. It's not. Not it's a must-win game five. That's yeah. all they're saying. But you, you just knew that was going to happen when these quotes started to come out. But I think it's the right mentality, and hopefully it pays off for them tonight. Speaking of paying off, <laughs> you've waited. It's time for snow time. All right, it's time for one of our favorite segments. We hope it's one of your favorite segments as well here on Celtics Today. And we have no doubt that it will be. If it's your first time. It's Taylor Snow's favorite segment. It, it that is, I know. It is the abominable snowman's favorite segment. Taylor Snow here to provide some great stats and some levity, as he always does. Some cold, hard <laughs> stats. That's right. Let's go, T. Snow. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't handle the Dallas heat. Didn't, didn't do any snow I didn't time see much snow down there. You were, you were melting. <laughs> down there yeah you know I kind of like coming on toward the end of this show to deliver stats it's kind of like how Peyton Pritchard comes on at the end of quarters that's right oh, he to does that's right shots. the closer yeah. and, and Taylor also checks himself into the show we didn't want him <laughs> back just but he just showed up in. and made that graphic so uh, I, I we guess go. we'll just roll yeah. with it Taylor right, go it. ahead let's what do you it. got for us so now Peyton he hit the what Joe Mazzulla said was the biggest shot of game two when he came in at the end of the third quarter hit banked in that buzzer beater and if it seems like he's been doing that a lot this year, it's because he has. He's made 15 field goals within the last three seconds of a quarter this season. And that's fourth in the NBA, which is crazy when you look at the company he's in. He's got De'Aaron Fox, Jason Tatum, Trey Young, all three all-stars, yeah. guys who average 35 plus minutes a night. And then you got Pritchard coming in off the bench, averages 20 plus minutes a night. So that's, that's some pretty impressive company. As he said after he made the shot, this is what I do. Yeah. This is what I do. It's funny, I got to tell everyone this, that during game four, the Celtics got the ball late in a the quarter. There was like a second left after the Mavs turned it over. And Taylor looks at me and he's like, they got to put they got to put Peyton Pritchard in. And Peyton yeah. Pritchard all of a sudden jumps off the bench and checks in. I was like, great call. Great call, Taylor. But then he caught the ball and he stepped out of bounds. And then, really and then Luca was going offense, defense. So he gets back up off the <laughs> bed, probably had to take all of his wrapping off. It was kind of a funny moment. But I'm, I'm jealous of you, Mark, that you get to have the Taylor Snow experience during the game. Oh, all game. You should be jealous of him that he gets to have the Mark D'Amico experience all game. I wouldn't go there, but yeah. <laughs> come, come sit next to me. Trade, trade spots yeah. for Mark okay, here. Yeah. <laughs> You'll upgrade. You sit next He'll to Scal. Too. Oh, God, no. I'm out on that. I'm out on that. Now, if, if you look at just three-pointers toward the end of the quarters. He's made nine this year within the last five seconds, and that's tied for the league lead with Jason Tatum. That's crazy. So, yeah, that's crazy. This guy plays, what, he averaged like 20, 25 a minutes more, a game Just a little more, I mean, about 22 minutes a game. That's crazy yeah. that he's in that company. Yeah, and speaking of Jason Tatum, he has a chance to make some history tonight. Wow. If he scores 15 more points, he will pass Kobe Bryant for most playoff points before turning 27. That is some great company there. I had to sneak. I've heard of those guys. Had to sneak Jalen Brown down there at the bottom. He's as in, you he's should. Six. Yeah. Nice, should. nice emoji work as well. Thank you. Pointing I mean, out which one of those guys play for the Celtics. This entire list is Hall of Famer, yes. right? Like that's yeah. Hall of Famer, and Jason Tatum is about to be at the top of it. I know you said that all he has to do is score. He's going to score at least 15 points tonight. He's going to get this record, and he's going to be number one of all time. That's that's pretty nuts. And I was looking at players under 30. He's, he's already in the top 10 scoring for players under 30. And he's only 19. He, uh, so. Yeah, he's still 19. Yeah. The joke that never dies. <laughs> the joke that never dies. <laughs> it's, it's, it is amazing, though, that he is in all likelihood going to break Kobe's record. And that's his guy. I mean, the irony. That's his idol. Yeah. yeah. So, it well could done, be a Taylor. pretty cool night. For, for Jason Tatum. If he happens to get to the top of that list, which he's going to, and if he happens to get a win and share in that, uh, what Kobe accomplished at such a young age, I think that's going to be really special for him. Yeah. 
Get us 15, get us a win. We'll all go out for burgers later. Yes. Sounds good. We'll, yeah. we'll all get the same shirt. You said you had to eat, what, five burgers in five minutes to get that shirt? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't too hard. That's why I'm sick right now. I'm eating all the burgers. <laughs> you you sound but great. It's time to eat tonight. That's yes. what we're going to do. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Let's, let's, eat. let's eat. Great work, Taylor. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Tonight's forecast, a little preview of what we expect for Game 5. We've told you about what we think the environment will look like. We've showed some of the best posts from social media. We've got some great stats from Taylor. It's time to talk about the actual basketball yes. on the floor. There's a game tonight. And thankfully and hopefully it looks a little bit different than what we saw in Game 4. And look, that, that to me feels a little fluky. Feels like the Mavericks came out and they were extremely desperate. Maybe tonight the Celtics have a little bit of that desperation on their home floor. If the Celtics play desperate, they're a tough team to beat, right? And if they play with like absolute high level energy and effort, they're a tough team to beat. And then if they make shots, they're a tough team to beat. So if they do all of those things, something tells me we might be raising a couple glasses tonight. Yes, they're, they're <laughs> gonna be very tough to beat if all yep. those things happen. Now, one matchup I think Dallas probably feels good about is what they can do at the five. After yep. Porzingis went down, missed both those games in Dallas, Derek Lively, especially in game four, was simply phenomenal. And we're going to put the stats up right now for this series. The 100% three-point percentage <laughs> is, is funny, but that was the first three he ever made in his NBA career. Yeah. He'd been 0 for 2 in the regular season as, as a rookie, and then that was the first one in the playoffs he attempted. I think with Al Horford, it's fair to say that with Porzingis out, there are times where it, it, we're asking a lot you, of Al no Horford you know, at, at 38 years old. And going up against Lively and also Daniel Gafford, who you don't see here, but those guys platoon, those guys are young, they're active, they're high energy. And I think that's another reason why Porzingis would be so crucial coming back if he's able to. Yeah, and Lively, really, like th those first couple games, he just didn't play well. He didn't yeah. look like himself. These last couple games, double-doubles in both games, he's played really well. He made a three-pointer, as you said, the first one of his entire yeah. career. And it didn't look like it. Like, we were just talking about this yeah. off-camera. Like, it looked like he'd taken a 1,000 of them before in games. So... Let's hope that he doesn't make more three-pointers right. tonight. But, yeah, to your point for Al, uh, he's had a couple days off, right? Had Saturday and Sunday off. Hopefully that gets him a little extra juice coming into this game. Maybe Porzingis comes back and gets him a little bit of relief in terms of minutes. But something tells me Al Horford has one more big game left in him. And I'm not saying, like, 30 points or 15 rebounds or anything like that. But I feel like he's got one more really good game left in him in this series. And maybe that's tonight. And if it does come tonight, again, we're talking about ways that the Celtics are difficult to beat. When Al Horford plays really well, they are very difficult to beat. Maybe a, another fountain of youth game from Al yeah, Horford. Is loaded. That's what happened in game five against Cleveland back in round two when yeah. he was the best player on the floor. Seven of 12 from three or something it's, crazy. And, and so hype. And, you know, you could see him getting that emotion, that crowd involved. He was just tremendous. And hopefully we see something similar tonight. If that does happen... I feel like it's going to be a long and beautiful night here in the city of Boston. And, maybe <laughs> and it'll, it'll be a long time before you all see Celtics today again. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Hopefully Banner 18 is coming tonight, Let's folks. Let's go get it, folks. Enjoy Game 5. We'll see you at the Garden. See you, everyone.